So, Richard, what's going on? There's no doubt that immunotherapy has been a hot topic in oncology, initially with the CTLA-4 target agent, ipilimumab, and then nivolumab, and pembrolizumab, and melanoma, lung cancer, bladder cancer, and the list is ongoing. These drugs are designed to uh, make tumors accessible to the immune system. And when we think about liver cancer, there's been a lot of data that suggests that liver cancer might be a good target for immunotherapy, given that it arises in an inflammatory environment. Uh, there was an early study with, a C with uh, tremolumumab, a CTLA-4 antibody, uh, that showed some activity, but this was several years ago before immunotherapy really took on. Uh, but what has got people's attention was data presented at the ASCO meeting last year, uh, which was a phase one, then phase one expansion study of uh, nivolumab in patients who had prior treatment, looking at its safety and efficacy in patients with hepatitis C, hepatitis B, or no underlying uh, viral etiology. And the data was somewhat impressive. I mean, again, small numbers, single arm, uncontrolled, but they had an impressive one-year survival. There were patients who had significant shrinkage, not just 30 percent, but significantly higher than that, near CRs. And as we've seen in other solid tumors, these responses were long-lasting. So now there's a frontline study uh, that's being launched of nivolumab versus serafinib in the frontline setting, and soon to follow will be pembrol pembrolizumab uh, in the second-line setting. And of course, also we are looking about uh, the um, tremi uh, limumab plus uh, medi, which is other NTPDL1 in the second line setting uh, in three arm study. So as you can see, there's quite a bit going on. If anything, we urge you, and this is something I would like to hear Richard again saying that uh, please, it's not necessarily that you apply uh, immunotherapy out of a clinical trial in that setting because we heard about value, we heard about cost, and same time, these are great studies that we need to really make sure that we achieve, and there's no other way by doing it except by having patients on. Uh, any role for immunotherapy that you would think about uh, going on with the uh, local therapies, Ricardo? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the, this is actually uh, theoretically uh, the area that I really would like to see explored uh, because to me, the combination of some form of local or local regional therapy that will address the visible disease plus uh, an immune agent that will prevent or, or delay recurrences can truly be a change of paradigm. That's very important because after all, it's not necessarily that the environment of what we learned from the melanoma world, from what we learned from the lung cancer world is that uh, metastatic setting, multiple prior therapies may be where the immune modulation or the checkpoint inhibitors might be applying, but actually the environment of the, uh, uh, the locally advanced disease and all the inflammation and the all the immune activity that may be occurring by itself might be a great uh, uh, environment for unclocking that uh, checkpoint uh, uh, and uh, really inhibited to, re to allow for this activity to happen. But of course, clinical trials are needed, and uh, we stress again that uh, this is really where a lot of the resources should occur in regard to allocating patients with the appropriate trials. We covered a lot. It's fascinating how much is going on, and uh, if anything, we have reviewed a lot in terms of what's available for the treatment in HCC, what's emerging, and what options look most promising for managing the disease down the road. So before we end the discussion, I would love very much to at least uh, ask for final thoughts and to start with uh, Dr. Finn. Well, I think it's very easy to become discouraged by all the negative data that has occurred over the past several years, but we owe it to our patients to continue trying to move forward. Uh, you know, for the general community oncologist, they maybe see a handful of patients with liver cancer a year. This isn't lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer. And so I think that it, it really behooves them to have a patient seen at a large transplant-based multidisciplinary setting, even if the patient ends up coming back to them for care. But really, the optimal approach will probably de be developed in that setting, and it's certainly a way to get them access to clinical trials. Very nicely said, uh, Ricardo. Well, the point that we make uh, is uh, uh, we heard about many options, uh, really a broad spectrum for HCC, uh, and sometimes we may have the feeling that there are competitors like surgery versus ablation, chemembolization versus sorafenib. They are not competitors, they are complementary. And actually, the best way 
to measure how uh, a certain institution or, or medical center is doing well in HCC is to measure the level of consensus. In reality, when it comes to discussing individual patients, there is much more synergy and complementarity rather than competition uh, among these different options. So this is the key for the management of HCC, personalized decisions. Could not have been said better. And uh, Dr. Zingal, Emmett. Yeah, I, I want to echo the, the thoughts that we just heard. I mean, I think the key thing is that HCC treatment is complex with many treatment options. And so you really do get the best um, opinions and the best therapies when you're referred in to um, a tertiary care center where you have all of these subspecialties available. You have multidisciplinary conferences, multidisciplinary clinics, as well as clinical trials. And then finally, from a hepatologist standpoint, I think the, the key thing to emphasize is that, you know, there's a lot happening in terms of advanced disease and local regional therapy, but the best therapies are when you have cure, right? And then you can get a five-year five year survival, 10-year survival. And we're, hope, we're hoping that we can get there with advanced therapies and local regional therapies, but we're not there yet. And really, the best way you can make yourself eligible for curative therapy is to be found early. And so your patients who have cirrhosis should be on a screening program so we can find them early when they have curative therapies available. That's fascinating what my colleagues just mentioned. If anything, despite all the great technology and despite all the great science that's ongoing, which definitely we're very thrilled about and we are all part and witnessing, and I'm sure you do the same, it's interesting the collaborative effort that they're bringing up is so critical to make sure you take care of your patient with the advanced HCC and uh, or even with localized HCC as we just even he heard to kind of for the advancement of the cure. So please make sure you engage yourself in multidisciplinary uh, meetings. Uh, there's no reason at all to say that you're busy not to go to the multidisciplinary meeting, not, no reason at all to not call your colleague, not reason at all to not to check on clinical trials for your patients. This has been great discussion. Thank you very much everybody. If anything, thank you for joining us for this OncLive uh, TV peer exchange.